Hello guys, I'm Northwest Trees. Uh, today we are going to be looking at um, how to use if statements in mCreator 1.8.3 and uh, this should uh, be compatible with future versions of mCreator so don't worry about that. Uh, basically what an if statement is, is it creates a condition for something to be tested for and then it has the ability to do something with it if it detects if it's true or not true. Let's look into how to create a very basic uh, if statement to test for blocks underneath, say this block here. So what we need to do is create a procedure. Now there's a few ways we can actually do this. We can do this directly in the block. Uh, if we go to procedures, the procedure tab, we can just click this uh, green plus icon and we can create a um, generated name here uh, or you can edit it however you wish. Uh, we're going to be using a right click event to basically test for a block underneath. So we're going to just click OK or create procedure. It's going to pop open this window here. Now you could just create a regular procedure element as well but uh, right now we're just going to go to logic and loops and right here you have a few different examples um, of if statements uh, you have just a regular if statement to test for one condition and to do something within that condition and then there's a regular if statement with an else statement as well so basically what this one will do is it will if it doesn't find this particular condition, then it will do something regardless if it has a con if the condition is true or false. And uh, this one down here is a good example of two different types of conditions being tested for, but no, um, basically, uh, procedure to or any event to basically make sure that it has uh, carry on the code without needing to test for a condition. So once you have your if statement on the thing, you can click the little gear icon right next to it to configure your if statement however you wish. Now those examples under the logic and loops are just some of the ones that have been pre-programmed. Um, for example, we can just code it in like that and we have the double if statement there. We can also add another one if we needed another one or we can add an if or an else statement, just a regular else statement at the end. Now how this works is anything in the line of this uh, box here is going to run in that particular order. So if we have it set up like this, it's going to check for this condition, it's going to check for the second, third, and then finally if it can't find any of those, then it's going to go to the else statement. So uh, consider how you're going to be laying out your procedure when, or your if statement when you're actually testing for multiple things. For this tutorial, we're just going to be using um, two conditions and one else statement. That should be fine. If you want to get rid of that little box there, you can just click on the gear icon again and it will go away. Uh, right, so how the condition works. So this little knob right here is a condition where this little box in here uh, with that little down arrow right here is uh, your event that happens within it. So it's just like any other element, uh, you can just drag things into wherever you want it. And as long as the connections for the um, actual element match and the dependencies for that particular thing, uh, the way you're triggering it work, uh, then your procedure will work fine. So make sure that your dependencies over on this sort side uh, still follow the the dependencies for your trigger for your block item or whatever um, your mod is requiring for that partic particular trigger. There's a few things that we could probably end up doing. Right now we're just going to set up a quick uh, way to test for a regular block. So we're going to add this operator. Now what operators do is it usually tests for a condition um, it's like your way to basically confirm that something is there. What a condition basically is, is uh, something that has to be or has to not happen. So if we were to add a not statement, if we go to logics, 
and we go like this, then it can't be that block. So this would be the condition still, right? So if we had this configured to say for dirt, it would say, okay, anything but dirt. Uh, rather than having it just like this, having it say anything that is dirt. So if you need to basically not have, if you want to test for something that isn't there, then uh, you can just use a regular not statement and add that onto your if statement in front of your actual operator. And that will basically test for something that isn't there. Um, I use the not statements as well as these particular operators. There's a few different types of operators too. There's this one, which I actually use quite a bit. This is gives you a few different configurations in this particular one for ands, ors, and xors. Xors are basically, uh, there's also some other operators. This is a math type operator. Um, this can be used for testing, again, equal to, not equal to less than, less than or equal to, and greater than and greater than equal to. There's a whole bunch of other ones. Now this one little block right here, this indicates that it's um, going to be testing for a block exactly equal to something. Now there is a difference between one equals and two equals. Uh, sometimes you might want to test for a very specific type thing. It really depends on the way you set it up too, but um, most code will work fine with the double equals. Now this icon right down here, uh, there's the regular icon there, and then there's a little diamond icon. Now the diamond icon's for items, uh, but it's basically the same thing as a block uh, operator. So those are your basic operators. So it's your operator for text, I believe. Uh, it's just an equals variable, so you don't have any configuration on that particular thing. So in order to test for something, uh, we need to go into blocks, and then we're going to grab our block operator, or our block component. So this is going to basically test uh, for a block in the coordinates, and we want to configure this using our math operator, which is under the math tab. This will give us um, control over coordinates. So we're going to place that in like that. We're also going to need a math number. So we're going to go minus one. So we're going to test for the block directly underneath. And then we need to also go to Minecraft components. And we're going to test for a specific type of block. Uh, the block that I'm going to be testing for is stone. Uh, we're going to test for zero stone. So it's going to be exactly uh, regular stone. And we're also going to just copy this over and we're going to test for dirt and wherever dirt is right there and then what we want to do uh, so basically how it's going to work now is it's going to test for stone first when it's running the procedure and if it doesn't find stone then it's going to test for uh, dirt uh, one block below the actual block we're going to be making if it still can't find anything, then it's going to proceed to the um, else statement, which it will output some text. So now we got our two conditions in. What we need to do is actually make something happen. So we have two conditions. We're testing for things, but we don't actually have anything going on right now. So what we need to do is have some sort of event. We could either go into world management, all these little icons with the little divots right here. Uh, there's a little dent at the top and a little uh, extrusion at the bottom. Now those will work for your actual uh, events that will happen within your condition. So we could put these in here as this little divot right here, this extrusion will connect to your actual uh, event that will happen. So when you're planning out something, you have to kind of look for the markings here. There's also the actual condition markings, which kind of look like little puzzle pieces that connect to if statements and such. So um, we're going to just use a text statement. So we're going to go down to text. Actually, now there's some um, player procedures. And if we scroll down to send message to provided entity uh, shown hotbar. Uh, so if we grab that, we can put this under our first condition. 
and we can set a message to be displayed to the player in chat. So this is a stone block below. Or we could go below is a stone block. And we'll just copy that message. And we'll put the other one there and then we'll just change stone to dirt. Uh, we'll capitalize it. And we'll capitalize stone so we can see it easier. Stone. And we're just going to copy the text one more time. And we're going to call this um, block does not know what block is under it. So that's basically a very simple system to test for a block underneath using a condition in an if statement and providing some text for our event. So we're just going to click add procedure. It's going to be added automatically to our procedure on right click. We're going to click next and next and now we're going to go in game and test this out. So if we go into our blocks tab we can put down our block that we have coded in. I'm just going to grab stone and dirt. So if we place down dirt right here, place the block on top, we'll place some stone here, place that block on top, and then we'll use something like planks to test for our else statement. So first thing that we want to do is test our dirt. So as you can see it says below is a dirt block and this one will say stone and we can click stone again it will still stay stone. We can click dirt and it will say dirt but if we click on the one with planks underneath it will tell us that it cannot um, basically determine what block is underneath. So what's happening is it's testing for both of our conditions and it's running a procedure or an event based on the um, the block that's underneath it so we coded it into say two different messages based on what kind of condition it is but we also made a catch in the code where it will basically um, output a output error if it can't find a particular block that we haven't coded in uh, hopefully you found this uh, tutorial helpful uh, definitely uh, let me know if you have any questions and the comments down below and I'll do my best to help. If uh, you want to uh, ask any questions to mCrater, you can also ask on their forms or the um, issue log and um, the developer and uh, the rest of the community can help as well. So uh, outside of that, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.